In the first part of the series, we discussed making safe hand loads for the 455 Webley cartridge. But here in the United States, almost every Mark VI you're going to come across has had its cylinder shaved. And that means that when they were imported in the 1950s, the cylinders were cut back to allow them to chamber 45 ACP using a moon clip because 455 Webley was such a rare cartridge here in the United States. So most of the guns you're going to find uh, that are Webley Mark VI's here in the United States require using either 45 ACP ammunition or 45 auto rim. And we're going to talk about how to make safe loads for those. This is the brass from the three rounds that we've been discussing in this series. The actual 455 Webley brass is that short piece over to the right. Uh, in the center is 45 ACP, and all the way to the left is 45 auto rim. Now, with 45 ACP, uh, this is obviously a semi-automatic pistol round. And the way it chambers in a revolver, like the Webley or like the Colt or Smith & Wesson Model 1917s, is with a moon clip. Now, 45 auto rim is exactly the same case as a 45 ACP but it has a thick rim on it that headspace is just like a 45 ACP in combination with a moon clip. So you can use 45 auto rim as a regular revolver cartridge. You can't safely use factory 45 ACP ammo in a Webley Mark VI. It'll chamber, uh, but there are two reasons you don't want to use it. Reason number one is the Webley's bore is 0.454 inches in diameter and the 45 ACP is 0.452 inches in diameter, and you can get pretty mediocre accuracy. But the biggest reason you don't want to use it is because 45 ACP is a high pressure cartridge designed for the 1911 pistol, and it generates at least 21,000 pounds of chamber pressure. And with plus P, it's 23,000 pounds. Now, the Webley Mark VI is only made to withstand a maximum of 15,000 pounds per square inch of chamber pressure. And older Webleys can only withstand about 13,000 pounds per square inch. So you don't want to overpressure it. But you can make accurate and safe 45 ACP and 45 auto rim loads for the Webley Mark VI. But you have got to hand load for it and let's, let's go through the procedure. Well, a lot more of you probably have shaved Webleys, and you're going to be loading with either 45 ACP or 45 Auto Rim, which is what this is. Uh, I've got a lot of 45 ACP revolvers, but the others, besides the Webley, are all real 45 ACP revolvers. So I load them with the same ammo that I use in my 1911s. Uh, and I load that over on my Dillon. But because I don't want to mix up the Webley ammo and real high pressure 45 ACP ammo, I load the Webley 45 ACP over here on a, uh, a turret press. So basically, uh, it's a typical turret press operation, but I'm only using three dies here. Even though I could have gotten a factory crimp die for 45 ACP and use 45 ACP dies, you know, normal stuff, it would have put a taper crimp on it. And one of the things I like about the Lee dies is the seating crimping die actually will put a roll crimp on it uh, if you set it down as far as you can. And I like that uh, for these revolver rounds. So here's, here's the procedure. Now this is... This is a little stand that my turret goes on. Uh, you can see in the background a bunch of a bunch of turrets set up, and I always put the shell holder on this little stand with the turret. But with with the Webley, and you can see I think say four, five, five, forty-five uh, ACP Webley, so I I don't get it confused with anything else. Um, I've got two shell holders, one for 45 ACP and one for 45 auto rim, which is what I'm going to mount. I, I tend to shoot auto rim uh, much more in the Webley than I do 45 ACP brass. 
because like I said, I use my 45 ACP brass for my 1911s and for my uh, normal 45 ACP revolvers. So I like to keep the Webley stuff looking visually different. And, and that is where these Keith style semi wide cutter bullets come in handy because this is not going to look like the loads that I would put in my other 45 ACP revolvers. So, got some auto rim brass. We've got the same 255 grain 454 uh, lead semi wide cutters. I'm using blue dot again for the powder. Now, for years, I've used 5.1 grains of HP38 in my uh, my Webley 45 ACP rounds, and that's a pretty good load. Uh, but it's it's basically a max load for the Webley, and I've been so happy with the blue dot in the 455 Webley cases that I've decided to load blue dot now in the auto rim. Uh, and as you remember, we loaded 6.8 grains of blue dot in the 455 Webley cases. I'm loading 7 grains of blue dot even, 7.0, um, because I've got more case capacity and I want to keep the pressures about the same. So, uh, we're just going to cycle this around. I've got one empty station on here because I'm not using a separate crimp die. So we'll just bring it size it, prime it with the Lee Auto Prime. Alright, so we're primed. Expand the case mouth and dump powder. And good. get a bullet on there and run it up into the seating die. And we've got a completed round of 45 auto rim for Webley. So just load this batch up and after I'm done reloading we'll go out and we'll do some shooting. So this is loaded once again with the 255 grain Keith style lead semi wide cutter bullet and this time it's over 5.1 grains of HP 38. Our 45 auto rim hand loads shot a three and a half inch group at 25 yards. Not quite as good as a Fiocchi factory ammo, but not bad for a 95 year old uh, war veteran. <laughs> so I'll take it. And now I've got the shaved Webley loaded with the 45 auto rim cartridges. And let's get a velocity reading on that. Well, the next Webley load that we want to try is the 45 ACP 45 auto rim load that you saw me load up over at the bench. And uh, this one consists of 7.0 grains of blue dot under that same 255 grain 454 inch Keith lead semi wide cutter bullet uh, that we're using in all the other loads. So 
Let's see how this one does. This is actually the first time I've shot this. I just made my first test batch up. You got to see it. And now we're going to try it on target and see if it's any good. Well, we didn't do too bad with the seven grains of blue dot uh, in the 45 auto rim. This was my first target. So I've got a two and a quarter inch group at 25 yards, but I had two flyers, which this one I knew about. I didn't realize I'd pulled another one. So I set up another target and I shot another two and a quarter inch group, all six. It looks like I shifted my point of aim a little bit uh, for the last three, but by and large, that load is grouping pretty good. I'm getting some unburned powder uh, in the barrel, which tells me I might be a little bit under pressure at seven grains in the 45 auto rim case. But we're gonna chronograph it now, see what we get. And uh, maybe I'll experiment more with going up like 0.2 grains or so, depending on what the chronograph tells me. Well, I was pretty pleased with it on target. So let's see how the Webley loaded with 45 auto rims with 255 grain bullets and 7.0 grains of blue dot does in terms of velocity by running it over the chronograph. I think the velocity is a little bit lower than it could go. So I think I may be tweaking this load later on, maybe going up by 0.2 grains and uh, see how that does. Cause I think we're at a pretty low pressure, very safe right now. Overall, I'm very happy with my hand loads for the Webley Mark VI, particularly the 455 Webley uh, hand load. That one performs fantastically. For the auto rim, I'm really seeing a lot of promise out of the blue dot load, and I just think I'm not all the way there yet. So I'm going to go up in tenths of a grain, uh, up to 7.2, 7.3, and see how I'm doing. What I'm gonna to try to do is equal the velocity of my 455 Webley hand load and not exceed it and get the accuracy uh, into the same range. So I'll keep you informed on how that goes in the future.